Hello everyone, this is Solaris Blue Raven, and I'm here to communicate some information. Unfortunately, my show Raven Stars Witching Hour of last week did not get recorded due to an electrical storm we had prior to the show. So what I've decided to do is kind of put some footnotes together and just do a compilation of some of the things I covered that you might find interesting and informative. I didn't have a guest, which was actually a good thing because uh, we didn't get a, an archive. So um, anyways, my show is called Stirring the Cauldron. I mean, um, that's, that's the topic anyway. And, and what this involves is I've had a lot of requests for people and from people to uh, put together some kind of a, I don't know if it's a course, but some kind of a presentation where I talk a little bit more about the occult and the craft in general, which is what I'm planning on doing in October. So I'm going to set some time aside to do that. In the meantime, I want to go through a few footnotes and, uh, and, 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 and pieces of information that I had from last week. So uh, let's get started here. Anyways, this was from uh, 8, let's see here, 8-23-2014. And if you missed my show, Raven Star's Witching Hour on Revolution Radio, uh, this is kind of a compilation of what we talked about. And like I said, it was just me. And of course, I had a producer last week to run some clips for me, which I'm not going to put the clips in. Um, not Nothing pertinent, just a few things that trigger insofar as uh, resonance with time travel and consciousness and all that good stuff. So um, just, to, just to kind of backtrack a little bit here, we were talking a little bit about the H.G. Wells novel, The Time Machine, of course, written um, in the movie in 1960 with the original, which was with Rod Taylor. So, you know, in the illusion of time, is it's really important that people understand the concept of time because um, time is really... A benchmark of measure so there really is no such thing as time literally what you want to do is, is focus on consciousness and I'll get more into detail with that but some of the information I was running running through and, and for you all last week was uh, pertaining to a lot of time travel and HG Wells type information so um, the information reflected in HG Wells and his works is a reflection of what has been transpiring on this timeline due to, to some degree and we are the timeline insofar as time machines. We are time machines, our bodies, our vehicles of, of time travel and consciousness and supercomputer designs and everything that you can imagine in science fiction. We are much more than that as a physical matrix, which is really energy in motion because the matrix and the, the mass in your physical body is all energy. So we're dealing with consciousness and energy. So a lot of people, I would say the majority of people on this world have not been switched on insofar as understanding their multidimensional bodies or understanding how the multidimensional design works. And of course, training is required to accomplish this. Now, how do you get the training? Well, unfortunately, um, you get the training through covert technology or you get the training through uh, mystery schools, the occult, um, things that people are terrified of. Literally, you have to go into the paranormal, the world of mysticism, me metaphysics, um, everything pertaining to alchemy to really understand what you are. You have to put yourself under a microscope on a multidimensional level and look and see exactly what you are, the cells, the atoms, uh, the frequencies involved, the multidimensional design involved, which of course people think they're just uh, linear. We're multidimensional beings. This is a holographic planet. We have a holographic electric universe, which is multiversal. There are more than 11 dimensions, and I'll get into that later on down the road. So it's really, really a fascinating, complex design. And, and yet it's very simple to navigate once you understand and you're switched on. So anyways, I covered this last week a little bit, so we're going to be talking about it tonight. And, uh, you know, this is, like I said, this is just a, re, a recreation of, of my show, a compilation of what we talked about last week for anyone who's interested. So, And uh, I did mention, you know, can mankind control his destiny? I mean, that's the biggest question in the world. And, of course, we can manipulate any reality through consciousness, through consciousness alone, which means we manifest at will our own reality. And you literally, whatever you put out to the ethers or to the multiverse or to the universe is going to come back to you. Um, and if it's a good thing, then, hey, that's great. But, you know, what I have noticed coming from the covert technological aspects of this stuff is that if you are a powerful psychic being and you're very good with your telepathy and you're very clairvoyant like I am, you become targeted for uh, experimentation and indoctrination into covert technological interface with artificial intelligence, which is what happened to me. Now, when you get pulled into those arenas, it's very programmable as far as handlers, programmers, um, controllers, everybody's controlling you or trying to manipulate you and there is no free will involved or honored. And that could be very dangerous to tread because uh, those of us who understand the mechanics of the universe, I mean, they're literally trying to create a circumstance beyond your own control and consciousness due to their interface with the artificial intelligence. So you have to take your power back from these devices and mechanisms and, and become your own master of your own ship and your own vessel, which of course is the matrix of your body. 
and your higher self oversoul superconscious is really the one that is in charge because the higher self is overseeing your entire lifetime on this world it's the ascended master within it's the it's whatever you want to call it the godhead that is what you really want to make sure you have a sort con a secure connection to and that is something uh, that that they like to interfere with so when i say they obviously there are black programs running across the board here on this planet that are that are a little more devious than we'd like them to be in other words they're not using the technology on a positive level they're using it on a negative level and unfortunately you know I came forward and disclosed a lot of that because I saw it as a complete weaponized program and there was nothing good that they were doing with it and I felt that it had destroyed so many lives including my own that I was got obligated to come forward and actually talk about it and in reflection of that I'm really wondering if it was worth it or not to be honest with you but I, I think a lot of people do appreciate the truth and we'll get into that as well so there is there is a a little chapter I have in my book, Either Remote Black Operations and Areas Beyond 52. Of course, that book's on Amazon.com. I published that in 2008. And in chapter 27 and page 167, I, I wrote, um, Though I appear to be in one place, I am not, for I am on a simultaneous journey, time out of mind. Now, that's a quote that was in my book, and referencing time travel, which means when I was inducted back in 2004, everything was changing on that timeline when I was inducted, yet I was still in my house everything alternate realities alternate flow of universal consciousness everything was changed um, there was a complete dynamic and a complete shift in the way my life was at that time versus prior to when they inducted me so it's was, it was very interesting and of course it's all about consciousness and how we affect timelines through our consciousness and when people interfere with your life they're affecting your timeline as well although there's a karmic repercussion for that so they should be very careful of the boomerang effect which they have yet to experience and when they do I feel sorry for them so that's that's that goes for anybody who's dabbling like that so anyways so we are the time machines as I sell, said um, every cell and atom is connected to the intricate fabric of universal flow and consciousness and one can access these coordinates by higher consciousness frequency and letting go of the man-made programs false matrices and realities and what I mean by that is literally deprogramming yourself from the linear world you've been subjected to since your birth onto this world um, literally you come with all the components at the soul level before you enter onto this world of, of a multi-dimensional mastery so what they try to do is derail you from that when I say they I'm saying like they or the parties that be the people that want to control manipulate the little subhumans they're not extraterrestrials they're, they're subhuman two-legged who have too much money and time and the illusion of time on their hands to to play around and misuse technology and play mind games and mind hacks and that's what they've been doing and they've gotten away from um, with it for a very long time they're also very good at it they've mastered it completely so that's something that you might want to pay attention to so we are constantly moving through states of consciousness I mean everything you do in life is, is you're constantly navigating through consciousness each thought has a vibrational resonance each each thought and has a resonance and signature which is why affirmations prayers mantras and invocations are so effective along with toning and sound I mean they work they shift the vibrational frequency they open up stargates um, portals they can do so many different things with pure intent and even with negative intent you'll be spinning out some some lower astral vortexes but they're really not that powerful and what I will say is that the evil people that do the bad stuff you know it's lower astral junkyard literally they're not getting much power out of it it's just more of a psychological high and a psychological rush um, but literally there's no real power in that when you when you're really aligned and really plugged into full light harmonics you are you are going with the biggest most powerful frequencies in the universe and you don't in order to do that you can't be sacrificing people or animals you can't be doing malicious things on the world and killing people and, and being devious with technology in order to establish that you have to resonate at a very high spectrum and these guys aren't doing that so I can guarantee you they can't steal their way into that benchmark of, of frequency they're gonna have to ascend and of course they're unwilling to do that so they're primary move is to pull everybody down with them like the Titanic and everybody just kind of sink well that's not going to happen because we each have divine right and of course we all have free will which is honored by universal law so no matter what they pull out of their butts here on this planet when it comes down to whatever it is whether it's uh, your social security number or uh, uh, constitution or whatever whatever it is whatever piece of paper they use to manipulate you it's not worth a damn because when it comes down to it we are star beings we're star people and we have the celestial heritage and birthright of free will which is honored and allowing us to ascend to higher levels of consciousness where we have infinite ability and control over ourselves and our mastery 
And this is all supported by universal law and flow and our celestial heritage and ancestors, by the way, which include other star beings, other star systems and universes, other, other species out there, other life forms out there that are supportive of our progress and our evolution at the soul spiritual celestial level, which is not religious based. This is completely energy and consciousness. I am not talking religion. Religion, it does not have any resonance with the, with the universal flow and the harmonic of the spheres. It just doesn't. So I mean, we'll get into that also. And so let's see here. I was talking about the everything is vibrating at a frequency. Yeah, it's like a radio wave. So there are multiple bands of energy which, like a symphony, lay out in harmonic. Now your cells and atoms resonate with upper dimensional grid works naturally. It's an osmosis effect. The mind gets derailed by the false programs on this world. In other words, the more you watch mind rot on television or subject yourself to the wrong people or get pulled into these corrupt cabals or governments or corporations, the more you're going to get pulled into the lower astral, which is more dense and harder to get out of. So keep that in mind. You want to navigate to higher levels of consciousness and act like the spy bird so that you're able to see everything from a parallax view and understand what you're dealing with on, on a spiritual level because there's so much going on right now that is just, um, it's insanity in motion. I mean, if you're watching it and just being neutral, it's a very strange world right now. And I'm not getting wrapped up in it, man. I'm getting out of the way and I'm just letting this, this weirdness run. But at the same time, I'm moving to the next level of higher consciousness so that I'm not getting pulled down to their to their psychotic episode they want everybody to participate with because there's no it's a no good thing I mean you just don't let, you don't want to get involved in that let's put it that way it's just uh, it's a it's an energy suck okay it's like a black hole okay let's see here so I will be going through notes during this whole thing and like I said this is very candid I'm just kind of chilling out at my house and uh, putting these footnotes together and and kind of doing a recap of what I talked about last week and I think that's very important it's really sad because it was such a good show too I was like gosh you know I never do shows where it's just me I always have a guest and I made it a point to say well I'm going to go ahead and, and do this uh, this show and address these these topics and of course naturally it doesn't get recorded and naturally it's not uploaded and you know whenever I'm talking which is really significant not that I say this with any ego but when I speak it's always something important and my investigations and my research and my experience are like t like top of the line. You're talking to a, about someone who's world class when it comes down to who I am and what I am. And I don't say this with arrogance. I have the facts. I don't play speculation games. I am telling you the truth. What I'm talking to you right now, what I'm saying to you right now is 100% accurate. And you will find this out later on down the road when some, when some scientist comes out and goes, oh yeah, there's this, 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 and this. And I said, well, where were you guys when I was talking about this 10, 15, 20 years ago? This happens to me all the time. And unfortunately, my work gets ignored by a lot of people. And yet, at the same time, I do have a group of people that I know follow my work and research and respect it quite a bit. So, But unfortunately, I'm not mainstream. I don't want to be mainstream. And I see the circus in mainstream, so this is where I'm at. So anyway, so this is a representation, basically, where it's a recap of Raven Star's Witching Hour from last week. It was just me. OK, so uh, let's see as I pan down here. All right, and of course, uh, I did wish Brent a happy birthday. His birthday was also last week, so if you, uh, Brent Holland, by the way, he's going to be my guest uh, this coming Saturday. So tune in, and it will be a really good show. He's awesome. He's one of my favorites when it comes down to radio hosts. I, I have so much respect for him. He's such a wonderful host and very informative, very knowledgeable. He has a nice personality. I can't say more. I mean, I just can't say enough about him. He's a great person, great being, great soul. And of course, he'll be on this coming Saturday. So pay attention to that show. It's going to be a good one. We're going to talk about all sorts of cool, spooky, spooky tales and material. It should be really good. And of course, he's he's what um, Brett makes up for all the bad Canadians out there, as I've said before. I mean, obviously, um, there are some rotten apples in Canada, not mentioning any names with Neil, Alex or Getty. But but uh, Brent uh, makes up for the bad ones. Let's put it that way. He's a good guy. So moving right along here. So what I, that was kind of an off night, by the way. It was a really strange night on, on Saturday. You know, we had so much going on. And then, the, I, I mean, I don't know. What are the chances of Hawks residents getting struck by lightning and taking out the surfers right before my show? It's just, like, ridiculous. But um, anyways, he's a, he's a phenomenal person when it came down to resetting everything. He did get everything kind of set and running so that we were able to have a show. It just wasn't recorded. But uh, at least we got up and running, and that's great. And, of course, uh, you never know what's going to happen on this world. Everything's in motion and everything's in flux. So, 